I'm glad you could join us. I'm Annette Sherman. This is Community. You know, we invite Dr. Meg Lauman to come on this show each year, and my admiration for Meg seems to, to grow greater each year. And it's been about, oh, I think 20 years that I've been privileged to know Meg. But I'm only one of so many fans, not just locally, but throughout the world. The title of today's show is The Travels and Adventures of Meg Lauman. And we could probably use at least two hours instead of just the half hour show that we have to cover that topic, just mildly cover it. We just, I'm afraid, have to talk fast. Let me introduce my special guests. Let's start with Dr. Meg Lauman, affectionately known as Canopy Meg. And she is the director of the National Research Center of North Carolina and professor at New College of Florida. And then we have the handsome and intelligent Michael Long. And he's an exceptional student at our exceptional new college. And he's also a great Meg Lauman admirer, right? Uh, okay. Okay, Meg, we're going to start with you. I don't think I've ever asked you this. Where and how did, did your love of nature and science begin? I think it began because I grew up in a very rural part of the country, upstate New York. And I'm embarrassed to admit there were no movie theaters, there were no video games or any of those technologies. So I played in the backyard and I loved nature. I collected bits of nature and hid it under my bed and <laughs> mice came in and my mother got upset. But I made tree houses with my best friend too, named Betsy Hilfiger and her brother Tommy was making bell-bottom jeans when he was little. So I became a scientist, Tommy became a fashion designer. It does show you that in childhood, it's really important to, I guess, follow your passion. Well, you, he became a famous <laughs> That's true. fashion designer. And say his name now. Tommy Hilfiger, my next door neighbor <laughs> as a child. Uh, I think it's a good, it, I hate to say it because we're on television, but it's a good reason to get rid of television and let children play and, and create on their own. I mean, if Meg Lauman is any example, not everybody turns out like Meg, I'm sure. Some kids turn up. <laughs> Maybe not that's as, good. Not as great. <laughs> Tell us about your work at the, uh, I'm going to get it right, Nature Research Center in North Carolina. Sure. This is an amazing opportunity, actually, to get kids into nature, but also use technology. It's a world-first global center where we're going to communicate science to the public, as well as conduct cutting-edge science research. It's quite innovative. The state of North Carolina is funding the center. It's also half privately funded. But stay tuned, because we're going to connect to schools in Florida. Mm. We can connect to schools in India. It's all about using technology, as well as real nature, to inspire kids about science. Now, you have been working with this research center for how long now? Three years, two years? Uh, it's been a year and a half. Well, this year. Uh, we're constructing a big 80,000 square foot wing that's all environmental. It's In called fact, we LEED. Have some Let's take that's Let's worth a thousand it. words. Right. Let's see that. Is, is this the, that's the, the center? It's opening April 20th. You're invited. It's a 24 hour but opening. This is in North Carolina. And that globe yeah. that you see on the screen is a theater that can connect to every part of the planet through the internet okay, highway. I'm, I may just go and see this. There's another picture there that we should see. Right. And indoors we have exhibits. That's a whale. And it's showing you that with touch screens and all sorts of technologies, kids can have a very interactive experience with the exhibits. It's really it's fun. fun. I think it will be great. Oh, it, it's absolutely great. And, and all the while, because many people say, well, we've been missing Meg at New College, which of course they have. And that's why we, one of the reasons we brought Michael, so Michael can tell you how much he misses you at New College. <laughs> but, but you're still part of New College, and yes. you will be back with us, and you're back frequently at any rate. Um, we have uh, an object. Well, it's not an object. That little cellophane bag. Tell about that, because right. I think that's a so cute story. This is kind of illustrative of the Nature Research Center. This is a little 
ant kit that has gone out to ant, a -N -T, a -N -T, not a -U -N -T. In those little creatures that little, crawl into yeah. your cookies. Um, this was designed by some of my students in North Carolina. We call it the School of Ants because every school in the state has received an ant kit. And these vials have little bits of cookie in the bottom and the kids put them on the playground for an hour. The ants crawl in to eat the cookies. Yeah. The kids put the caps back on the vial and mail them back to the museum. And we have collected a map of every ant species in every school across the state. But this is how kids can use technology in real things great in nature. Idea, Isn't that fun? Sounds and like your brain. My students did it all, actually. I didn't have much to do with it. But these are the kinds of uh, activities that we can do at a nature research center. Okay. I want to mention you're absolutely, I think, wonderful, and so do many, many other people, columns. Now the columns, if you're not aware of Meg Lauman's column, they're the first Monday of each month in the Herald Tribune, it's sort of, a, it is an op-ed column, and the subjects are marvelous. Just remember some of the subjects that stand out in your memory. Sure. I like to write about both local and global. I've written about how sunscreen kills coral reefs. I've written about how camera traps are saving rhinos in India. Uh, I'm writing now about saving forests around the world, and I've even written about some of the common trees and insects in Sarasota County, and have fun just trying to educate people about the wonders of nature. I'm going to inject something in here, and I think that came out if people were listening. That is the way Dr. Lauman teaches creates an excitement about it. Now, the subjects that she just enumerated, and Michael is shaking his head, you may not see him on camera, but it, it, it isn't, the subjects may be yuck to me, <laughs> but, but, and maybe to some people when they go into it, but she makes this so alive and so exciting. I, 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 I'm gonna stop complimenting you. I, I, I just think you're wonderful you're and that's so it. You're so kind. <laughs> okay, in a recent column, this I think was so interesting. You quoted poet Mary Oliver, who I had not heard of. It was her quote, Mary Oliver's, Instructions for Living Life. And she says, here it is, very simple. Pay attention, be astonished, tell about it. And I think, Meg, that's the way you live your life. I admire her so much. She's a great poet. And actually, my mom discovered Mary Oliver and shared it with me because she said the same thing you did. She thought maybe she was a good voice for me. Absolutely. Okay, now, we talk about travels and adventures of Dr. Lauman. I'm going to say a name of a, of a country or a place, <laughs> and I'd like you to tell what you did there recently, as briefly as you can, and how you did it, and why you did it, and under what circumstances. Okay, first, Africa. Uh, uh, what were you doing there? I've been working in Ethiopia, believe it or not, with our local tree foundation, very small group of dedicated conservation and nature lovers, and we have absolutely saved the forests of Ethiopia. It sounds hard to believe, but we've constructed simple stone walls around the last pieces of forest. We've got some forest. pictures here. Uh, if we Call up that picture. Okay, two adorable children, three adorable children. Right, so those children. are the stewards of the forest, I call them, the next generation. Those kids had never seen a pencil before. You can see the little girl grasping her pencil. She was so happy to receive this little gift that we brought. So it illustrates how blessed we are and how much we need to share because we are one planet. There's another picture there, and I'm not sure what it is. What and that we is here? the wall. That's the wall built by oh, the okay. Tree Foundation from Sarasota, Florida. So with oh, right. just tiny bits of funding, we've been able to fence off these remaining forests forever so the cattle doesn't get in, so the people don't plow too close. And they love their forest. It provides medicines, fresh water, all of the pollinators for their crops. So these forests are very essential to their lives. Next year, Meg, I think I'm going to I'm going to arrange two programs back to back. We never have enough time, Michael, and I, I can't wait to get to you. But we're going to get to you. You brought some objects from yes. from uh, Ethiopia. I did. So this is a cross that the priests gave me. It's very special to me because they made a blessing because they are so happy that now working together 
were going to save their people as well as their natural resources. And this is a new species of beetle that I'm so delighted has been bought. The name will be named after a special Sarasota couple. I can't tell you who yet, but on our Tree Foundation you do have the couple? website, yes, um, we are going to be selling the names of new species of Ethiopian insects. Everything is new over there, and we're using all of those funds to save the forest, to build the walls, and educate the children. Okay, I'll tell you what I'd like you to do. If you're interested in that, if you want it to be Mary Smith's beetle, or Mary, they're not all beetles. That's right, I want the Annette beetle, too. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Uh, call me, because we're not gonna put a number. We can put the website right. up there, and, and if, if you can do that now, uh, please, Damon, do it. Uh, there are a couple of websites that you can mark down the, the uh, address and get in touch with, with Dr. Lauman regarding this, because we do, obviously, I say we because I feel attached to, as a friend to Meg, uh, need the, the financial assistance to continue It's this. a great Christmas gift, isn't oh, it? Oh, wow, what a marvelous <laughs> Christmas gift. And I assume you have a lovely little note that goes with it. Right. So, Trust her, she does, <laughs> does all this. All right, that, that is uh, what we have to say about, and we should have the two objects. Okay, South America, canopy sure. research of the Amazon treetops. That's your speed. So I continue to go to the Amazon every summer, taking new college students and Did you other, go with her, Michael? I wish. This summer, oh, we're, next time, we're working maybe. on this summer, and uh, this work is long-term, looking at medicines, looking at really important ways that the forest contributes to our health here. And right, I we have, have we a have some objects, fun things. If you, you want, to use, use the objects, and then we'll do the pictures sure. later. Okay. Sure. So this is a blow gun. Again, everything made out of plant material, which is really fantastic. Here's the darts that people still use for their everyday hunting. Very sustainable hunting. Uh, these are both snakes, and I'm sorry to that scare you. Oh, good, he's got a close uh, shot of it. But these are, what's interesting is this is their artwork, <gasps> and it's just it's quite vines. beautiful, Meg. Yeah, they just paint or uh, actually do a tiny bit of carving of different simple pieces of vine and come up with these amazing artworks that decorate my home now, as you can imagine. And they never want money. We usually trade t-shirts or flip-flops for these beautiful pieces of art. You and know, you know th there are so many. That's right. why I say we really One need more. two programs because I love I hearing know. about these things and so does everybody really. What is that? And this is just a gourd that's been carved with a beautiful tarantula. Makes a lovely wall hanging beautiful for artwork. the persons that love spiders. <laughs> okay, did we see, we, we did see the, uh, we didn't see the two pictures from this area, from, uh, okay. So there's the canopy walkway that we use and all of my guest scientists, I invite people to come with me and help with the research and we use the walkway, it's really extraordinary. It's like a super duper Mayaka walkway and we conduct research up there while we're down in the Amazon. Okay, um, I, I, when you get a chance, Damon, I'd like a, a, a time check, please. Uh, India. Forest Conservation and Rhino Surveys as a Fulbright Scholar. You were a Fulbright Scholar last year. Right. I was a Fulbright Scholar in India because the Indian government and science community over there wanted my expertise a little bit based on the Mayaka project. They really would love to make uh, conservation programs accessible to the public and educate Indian people about the values of forests. So I went over and met with forestry departments to help them make some programs for conserving their forests. Extraordinary. We rode on elephant back to survey rhinos. I'm not actually. a happy, <laughs> not a, I did that once in, in an interview did we did at, at a, at a uh, at the circus. Oh it is gosh. not comfortable, Meg. I know. But you know what they told me? If you walk, the tigers could eat you. So oh, when then you get on the, ele the, <laughs> the, the elephant. Sure, get on the elephant under those conditions. Uh, we have some objects from uh, sure. India. Um, so this is, of course, the cobra, which is a very sacred animal in India. It's it a is problem, sacred. but it's also very sacred. They carve cobras. They have cobras that are part of their religious You would not ceremonies. find cobra soup. Uh, you would not, but they are quite <laughs> extraordinary. And this I love is sandalwood, which is a very oh, We're not going to be able to see this, but if you hold it up, you may be able to just hold your view long enough because there's a little elephant in there, in right. the big elephant. 
It's in the amazing. mommy yellow. And it's incredible carving. This is one piece of wood where they've reached their little carving knife inside to carve the baby. Isn't that wonderful? I love that piece of art. It is just an amazing piece of art. You might have to go to India with me. <laughs> no. Meg brings me different things. She's <laughs> going to show you. And we'll, we'll talk about that. Now, in the USA, in Washington, D.C., um, inspiring diversity in the next generation. My real passion is making sure that anyone and everyone could become a scientist because we have so much intelligence out there that needs to be recruited. So I've been working for six years with committees in Washington with different science organizations to really inspire the next generation of we scientists. We have one picture I think for we that. do, yeah. Uh, okay. So those These are my kids. successors. If we can bring those kids in along with any yeah, other... Yeah, the girl in the uh, middle called me for a program. She said she's, she's Meg no, She's she the didn't next call Nobel me. Prize winner. It was a long distance call. <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to uh, uh, Skip the, the European sure. uh, thing, which was important, but I do want to get to Michael. Uh, but Meg, you brought me something. I uh, did bring you. Last time, Meg brought me a, a an ant lollipop. The lollipop had ants in it, and um, yuck. Did you even? I, try? I didn't. I, I I didn't want to hurt her feelings, but I wasn't going to eat the thing. But there was one of my my. Uh, one of my volunteers uh, wanted it, and I, I made her promise that she would eat it if she took it. She said she did, and I don't think I spoke to her again in a long time, but nevertheless, <laughs> that was it. What did you bring me this so time? So I decided this year you are so deserving after that ant lollipop. But, <laughs> um, this is actually very special. It's called an amulato, but it's been blessed by the shaman in the rainforest. And what do you and do with it? And it's for health forever. If you have a a headache, you just rub it if you have a sore. But they believe in the power of plants. And maybe a lot of it is what you believe. But this has been blessed for you, Thank so you, you just must keep it. A lot of stuff in there. All right, right. I will I will put this over here and use and it you just if I have an know. ache or a pain. Right. All right. Michael Long. OK, you're very patient and very sweet and <laughs> very course. handsome. And Thank that's you. it. We're finished with you. No, we're not. <laughs> No, no. How old are you, Michael? I'm 20 years old. How old? 20. 20? You yeah. know, 17, 16. That's okay. I guess that's good in the long run. <laughs> Your parents look young? Yes, they do. Watch what you say because they're probably... <laughs> no, they are old fogies. No, no. Where are you originally from? Sarasota. I was born and raised here. You were raised here. You're the one. Yes. Yes, oh, I am. Okay, that's wonderful. Now, in your notes to me, you say that Dr. Lauman influenced your decision to go to New College. Uh, explain that. I would say more than influence. Dr. Ma uh, Dr. Lama was like a very big magnet that sort of drew me to the school. I mean, the first thing I wanted to see at New College when I was trying to determine my decision was what are the faculty like? And when I go to a faculty page and I see a professor hanging from a tree <laughs> <laughs> with a <laughs> rappel system and then walking through canopies, that's where I want to learn. I'm a practical person. I like being in my environment. And, um, and that's Meg. That's, that's what Dr. Lauman does on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's what I wanted to be with. So we, we definitely miss her, and we can't wait to have her back, back at home full-time here at New College. Uh, tell us about some of your studies at New College. Well, I'm a little bit different from Dr. Lauman. I uh, am more interested in bridging science with policy. Um, so I work a lot within political structures and a lot of my studies are focused on governance. How do you govern our resources and how do you ensure that what is here today will be here tomorrow? Um, so right now I'm taking a lot of classes on ecology to build my scientific foundation, but at the same time I focus on policy. Okay. You have some very interesting involvements in addition to your studies. In fact, I'm going to call off some references that I have. Uh, and please tell us very briefly about each one and what you hope to accomplish with these efforts, okay? Sure. All right, the first one I have, and some of these I don't understand because environmental action through policy and public service. Well, right now, um, perfect example is I serve as a student body president at New College, and um, one of my, obviously my biggest passion is the environment, and so we, we noticed that there was a problem with the usage of bottled water on our campus. So one thing that we are hoping to do within this next semester is to implement a ban on bottled water, reduce our plastic consumption, and install different options and alternatives for students and You're faculty. You're saying people should not drink water out of a plastic bottle? We're saying that people should have the opportunity and the resources to not have to consume plastic at a large rate that's not sustainable. Okay, you got a real big project there, Mike. We do. Okay. Environment. 
I know he'll do it. He'll do it. He'll yeah. do it. Environmental research at New College of Florida. Well, I've worked a lot with the Fish and Wildlife Research Institution. I've done a lot of water analysis. Um, I also served as a micropropagation laboratory technician. So I did a lot of um, basically plant cloning. And so even though I do like more of the policy sides of things, more, even though I would like to see a ban on bottled water, um, I still do love science. Um, Desire to work within the fisheries management field, currently studying various international governance uh, structures and comparing to systems in the United States. Well, that's a departure from, in, in a way, from the environment. Oh, or not? No, not at all. Um, okay. I grew up living on a boat, and I live on a sailboat right now. That's my home. Um, but here in Sarasota, my biggest passion in the environment has been fishing. And uh, my goal in life, long term, um, is to prevent the overconsumption and overfishing of our resources and our coastal environments. Um, so my goal is to work with NOAA in my career, work as an environmental activist to um, work through the political system to ensure that we have regulations and laws that will prevent overfishing. Okay, it does, it certainly does. Extensive volunteer work with AMI Kids. Tell about that. What, what are AMI Kids? Sure, AMI Kids is the name of a national organization that takes in youth who have committed um, legal offenses in their young Kids age. Kids that have. Yes, um, mostly anywhere from 10 to 18 years old. I was one. Um, I got into a bit of trouble when I was in high school and um, I went through this juvenile reform program and it uh, changed my life completely and changed my outlook on life. So ever, ever since graduating in 2008, I've continued to work with the program. I teach marine biology classes, I teach scuba diving, sailing lessons on a bi-weekly basis and um, the whole goal of the program is to give students, younger, the younger generation who have made mistakes in life, the opportunity to correct their lives and put them on a path uh, into their future. And um, it's one of the things that I'm most passionate about and I'm able to combine that with the environment. I think, Michael, being an example and saying what you just said is probably the most significant interest creator for these kids to look at you and say, hey, I, I could probably do that, what he did. He, yeah. he, he knows what he's talking about. That is so great, and, and, and I just, that's marvelous. Um, okay, the last question. What are your hopes and dreams for your ultimate professional career? I almost can figure it, but tell me. Being a lot like Dr. Lauman would be great. She's <laughs> traveling all over the world. You uh, like that idea. I think that would be incredible. Um, ultimately, um, I want to leave the, be the world a better place than it was when I got here today. And uh, that's a very broad goal, but working through politics, being a congressman, being the president of the United States, whatever it takes to change the environmental mindset of people to where we understand that our resources are depleting and we have to take action to preserve them. Well, it's not too late to get into the Republican primary at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be a couple days too late. Is it, I don't mean in Florida, I mean for the, for the national before they decide. Who There's this really silly law that we have in the Constitution that says you have to be 35. So oh, being 20, shucks. I thought about it. I really did. <laughs> well, it's, it's only 15 years. And in those 15 years, you can gather some additional government experience and what have you, although I'm not sure. I think the experiences that you have are wonderful. Uh, and, and 15 years, you will keep on keeping on, I'm <laughs> sure. So uh, check with me when you, when you decide and see if we're probably still on the air at that time. We'll, let's replay this segment and say, see, you made it uh, as president I'm talking about. <laughs> you wow. can say it was announced first on your show. <laughs> it was a little premature, but, but it was first on this show. I don't know how much time we have, not very much, but in the very limited time that we have left, I, I think, and we talked about this before we went on the air, Michael, first time I met Meg Lauman, I was, it was during the book festival, I think, That's right. and uh, they called me and asked me if I would like to interview this Dr. Meg Lauman, who is a professor at, at New College, and uh, I think you had written some books or something. We right. didn't even talk about the books that you've written. Um, and I, I got information on you, and of course I was very interested and, and got to, I don't remember where it was, it was some meeting room or something. And here are these two young boys sitting over the side, at the side of the room. And I said to Meg, uh, I just thought they were just waiting for somebody. I said, who are those two? Oh, she said, those are my sons. And I was telling Michael, I have never seen, uh, and, and 
listen, having boys, uh, mom is okay, you know, it's that kind of thing. It's really dad that they, they really like. But these kids just couldn't, and I started to talk to them. They adored their mom, and not the, of course everyone adores their mom, but they adored what she's doing. They had such tremendous respect and admiration. They just wanted to join her, to be with her, as you were saying, Michael, go out and, 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 and where are they now? What are they doing now is my, the, the question. Hopefully what they're doing is similar to what Michael will end up doing. I might have to adopt him. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I'm, get in line. There I'm you go. Number. Okay, I understand. Uh, but the boys are great. Uh, we keep in close touch. They teach me now, which is wonderful. And one is doing solar engineering out in Arizona, so he's really interested in clean energy. And the other one, who is my math major, is actually modeling... Uh, efficiencies for companies as a consultant in Boston, but his dream is to go back and get an MBA so that he can make an energy, clean energy startup company. So they're both, I think, trying to look at solutions, whereas my generation perhaps uncovered some of the issues that need solutions. I think this generation will be the ones to make those solutions. How old solutions. are your boys now? 24 and 25. Well. That was a long time ago. I they were know. little. They were. I think they were like nine, eight I or nine. I think they were two. So yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. But it time flies. We still have fun. I hope they'll come to the canopy with me and carry my bags. <laughs> <laughs> well, they want to do more than carry your bags, mommy. I'm telling you that right now. Not that you need me to tell you. Um, it is fascinating each time, as I said early in the program, having you on, and hearing what you do. Uh, Meg had the audacity, the sweetness and the kindness to invite me to come with her on a trip, but she promised me there wouldn't be a place that I could put my makeup on or that I could, <laughs> I could wear a hat. Although she said there could, there were hats. You do wear hats. We do wear hats. We needed them in Ethiopia, for example. See, now you so tell hot. me. I, I would have. <laughs> no, but the fact is that, that uh, it is what I was long-windedly getting to is that it is not, you're not checking into a five-star hotel. Right. Okay? You, you know that, Michael. All yeah. this is, you're willing to, well, you, you're used to roughing it. I mean, it, it, you're accustomed to that. You even like it. But uh, it is roughing it, Meg. My mother keeps saying, when will you get a job that has a flush toilet <laughs> for all your travel? <laughs> well, the fact is you have, she does have a very comfortable <laughs> home in Sarasota. I, I probably one my... in North Carolina as well <laughs> with flushing it's I, I didn't nice ask her before the show. She's like, to say, no, I don't. I'd like to feel more. more. No, of course she does. It's always great to come home. That's one thing I must <laughs> say. We, we're so lucky and blessed to live in this country of ours. And, but I think it's great, especially for students, to see how so many people in the world live because, you know, we can make solutions for a lot of these issues. And that's the exciting part about what the next generation will bring to the planet. Okay, now I want to remind you, uh, at first Monday of each month, you can see Meg's column, and that's very keeping in touch. It's my way of keeping in touch with Dr. Meg Lauman. And we are, Sarasota is, loves Meg Lauman, and please come back to New College to stay. But I, I don't want to say that in a way because I want you to continue doing what you're doing. Oh, but thanks. we don't have any more time to talk about it. You come back when you're running for president. <laughs> Uh, just enough time to remind you that Community is brought to you as a non-commercial public service by Community Video Archives in partnership with SNN Local News 6. And you can see Community on SNN Local News 6 each Saturday and Sunday now with two different programs, two different hats, 8 p.m. And now you can also see selected programs of Community on our web from anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world, any time of the day or night. The address is communitysarasota.net. Tell your friends out of town to check us out. See what a wonderful community we are. We wonderful people like Meg and Michael in this community. Uh, we're about out of time. I thank you for being with us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now. The time really flew. We bid you adieu from community. If you want to know why we love it here, so check out community. Well, it's a who's who, a what's, when and where show.
It's a mover and shakers who care a show. Meet your neighbors and friends, each one has a passion. The topics vary from nature to fashion. The host with the most on our cultural coast is net With community. See you next time.